Is your 3D printer hot end leaking filament in the same way your kitchen sink is leaking and you're totally ignoring your wife about fixing it? Is your heat block or nozzle developing shit stains that remind you of your second grade experience? Did all of the above happen and then you try to take everything apart and snap off the bits inside of the heat block causing you to completely hate 3D printing? Well I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is your hot end is assembled wrong. The good news is I'm going to show you how to do it correctly. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Dustin. First of all, I just want to say Merry Christmas. Today is the 25th of December, which means absolutely nothing to me, but it is Christmas time, which means I get paid work time for not being at work, and it's awesome. Uh, but for those of you who celebrate any holidays, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, what all that nonsense. Today, we are going to be talking about the beautiful hot ends. And uh, mainly, when your filament just decides to leak out of the threads, whether it's around the hot end, or around the nozzle, or around the heat break. You probably have run into this before, especially if you're new to 3D printing. You'll just have filament oozing out from all of the extremities and you don't know why, and it's getting all over your the hot end itself and all over your print. It makes the print look like crap, and then, of course, it makes this look terrible. You go to take it apart, you snap off parts, you break everything, and you just hate the experience suddenly of 3D printing. Unfortunately, this is something that a lot of people who are new to 3D printing run into, and it's not really their fault because this is something that isn't really talked about in any, you know, whether it's build guides for 3D printer kits or even the big YouTube channels who talk about 3D printing. They don't usually talk about how to properly assemble a hot end like this. And, you know, it's not really their fault at, at all, but, you know, it's this is just something that happens occasionally. And the main reason basically that I found is that most people, if not everyone, does not have their hot end assembled the proper way. Uh, that's mainly because uh, these hot ends will come assembled just like this um, or something similar. Usually it has the thermistor and the hot heater uh, inside of it as well. And they'll just go, okay, cool. We'll just put this into the extruder and there you go. Let's go ahead and print. Well, nine times out of ten, this isn't going to be tight. For one, even even if it was still properly assembled, it's not going to be super tight, so it will leak purely on not being tight. It needs to be tight. But the main thing is this little gap right here. And because this right here is borked and it's a piece of crap, I'm going to show you on the new one. I didn't have a stand-in full-size block like that one, so this will have to do, otherwise it's identical. So the first thing you're going to want to do when you get the either a 3D printer kit that has this nozzle, or if you buy a whole new nozzle assembly, is take the stupid thing apart. Um, you might need some pliers or some wrenches or something like that to loosen all these things. Um, I'll go into the exact sizes in a minute, but for the most part, but you'll just need to disassemble them to these parts right here. This right here is the heat block. This is the heat block. This is the block that gets the heat. This is the hot and hot end. This is where the thermistor and the heater go to make the 3D printer do its thing. Uh, without this, you pretty much wouldn't have a 3D printer. At least this part with its combination. Of course, right here we have a standard nozzle. This is a standard size nozzle, so it's got an M6 thread. It's point four millimeter hole in here of course you can get them bigger or smaller holes depending on what you're going for but the standard at least for like Folger Tech 3D printers is one of these and this right here is the heat break as I usually refer to it yours might not look exactly like this but it is generally going to be the same type this is not an all metal heat break therefore you can see the Teflon material in there you see that uh, plastic type looking stuff that's in there that is a Teflon tube that's uh, basically what prevents you from using non all metal hot ends with super hot filament you know like uh, polycarbonate stuff like that you need to print really hot that uh, Teflon tube in there prevents you from going over like 250 degrees Celsius for an extended period of time though I do usually use these up to like 260 C without issue but they're rated temperature is like 240 250 so just food for thought if you use an all metal hot end a true all metal hot end there won't be any tube in here it'll just be a smooth metal type of thing so anyway when it comes to assembling these the proper way if you have a heat break that's got a little gap right here that is there for a reason um, that's there to 
pretty much limit the heat travel from the heat block up into the extruder block. Of course, it's not, you know, massively going to help, but it is there for a reason. So the first thing that I usually do is I'll take this. You want to take the short threaded side that goes into the heat block. And so I'll just thread it in, you know, one or two turns. Nothing, not major. I'm not trying to fully thread it. Then you take your nozzle and you do the same thing. You thread it in and it should thread in smoothly. They both should be the same thread. The thing you want to look for here, and this is basically what separates a badly assembled hot end from one that won't leak, is the nozzle gap. Most of the time, people are just going to crank this nozzle down until it's flush with the heat block, like here. That is where the problem begins. The best thing you need to do is loosen it off by, you know, a turn or so, so there's a small gap in there. It doesn't need to be big, it just needs to be a little bit gap. You do not want this tightened down all the way onto the heat block. You want it to be backed off just a little bit. I usually go for about a millimeter or so, but it doesn't, it's not an exact science. Sometimes science is not an exact science. You should know that. So as you can see here, I got a little bit of a gap going on right here. And now what you want to do is tighten down this heat break until it is basically touching the nozzle thread in there. Now, of course, because this is threaded the way it is, it's starting to get a little bit tight. You know, it's hard to be, do it by hand. But once you crank it down, you'll feel that these are both basically locked onto each other. So now that I have this uh, heat break threaded into the point to where it's touching the nozzle, and you can feel the nozzle stiffen up once it's basically connecting in there, I will take a small wrench. This happens to be six millimeter. Um, which matches perfectly for this nozzle. Your nozzle, depending on where you get them, might be slightly different. It might be eight millimeter, it might be seven millimeter hex, but for this one, it's a six. And I will basically go and use this, holding the heat brake and tighten it down a little bit more. It doesn't have to be super, super tight. It just needs to be pretty darn snug. You can also grip these with some vice grips. You can grip them with some big pliers, whatever you'd like. And uh, you're basically just tightening it down super tight. And that's all you really have to do. The main thing is you want to maintain that slight gap right there. And you want these to be snug on each other. So like I said, a lot of time I'll just put these into some grips. And I'll come in here and just tighten it down. You know, you're not trying to snap it off because this is brass and this is aluminum. It will break if you try to tighten it too much. But you just want to make sure it's snug. Snug is good. And honest to goodness, that's really all you need to do in order to prevent leakage out of these things. Unless you have a terribly machined part, or any of these parts are really bad quality, you shouldn't have any leaks with this setup. That small little gap is literally what you want. And I'll show you why. If there was an x-ray vision, I would show you that, but inside of this heat block, these two are connecting just like this. Of course, it's not gonna focus. And you want them to be nice and tight on each other so that the filament cannot leak out. And also remember, metals expand as they get hot. This thing gets to like 500 degrees in some cases. 500 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 and whatever degrees uh, science. So that's, that's why you create this little gap. So this heat break engages on the nozzle itself and not on the threads. Well, it engages on the threads of the heat block, but they're doing it together basically you're, you're you're creating a nice beautiful sandwich in which no mayonnaise is going to leak out because if you've ever you know had a sandwich that just has condiments falling out the bottom you know how annoying that is to get it all over your nice white pants this will essentially keep your pants clean more or less it's fine don't worry take that as you want and that's all you really need to do. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It's going to be a short video, but uh, yeah, like I said, this is your biggest thing. If you do have issues with the filament, you know, leaking and all that, if you're using ABS, take this and chuck it into a uh, thing of acetone and that'll dissolve away all the filament and you can go ahead and take this apart. If it's PLA that's leaked all over and you're trying to take it apart, you're going to need to heat this up a little bit. Um, what I usually do is I'll put it into some pliers. I'll heat it up with a gun, with a uh, torch of some sort, small torch, not a big propane torch, 
and uh, just enough to where it starts to warm up the filament so I can undo these and then clean it up as best I can with cleaners of some sort and uh, try to salvage what I can. The biggest thing also is if you damage this uh, Teflon tube in here, the heat break is really, it's useless at that point and you should get a new one. I have a bunch of these stocked up because, you know, it is a wear item. These do wear out over time. Um, you know, this is not really something that gets replaced by companies. It does wear out. They're super cheap. Same with the nozzles. The nozzles do wear. I would say the whole hot end itself is a wear item, including the thermistors and the heaters as well, because, you know, they're super fragile. So you can buy hot end assemblies fairly cheap online. Folger Tech sells them on their website. You can get them on Amazon. It's, you know, basically whatever. So that's really, that's, that's all you really need when it comes to redoing one of these hot ends. Like I said, uh, that's all there is to it. So hopefully this uh, video was helpful to those of you who are having this issue. I know a lot of people do. A lot of people will continue to because that's just how it works. Um, but if this did help you, give this video a like, comment, say hi. I miss all you guys. I will say there's going to be a new thing in the description of my videos. There is a uh, coupon code now that I've, uh, you know, agreed to use with Folger Tech. So I've stated in the past that I'm really against affiliate codes when it comes to uh, products that I review and stuff like that. I haven't said it in a video really, but um, I wrote a blog post about it a while back. I'm not really in support of coupon codes when it comes to products that I support or products that I review or anything like that. Of course, I work for Folger Tech, so there might be a conflict of interest in that regard. But in the description, there's a coupon code, Corbin, my last name. And if you use that with the link that is directly below it, um, you will get 5% off of your current purchase or whatever it is. In turn, I will get 6% of that sale. That is a 6% commission. I'm telling you the numbers flat out because I want you to know and I have nothing to hide. How often do YouTubers tell you how much money they make off of sales like this? They don't. Why? Because they don't want you to know. But like I said, I you'll get 5% off your purchase from Folger Tech, whatever it is, whether it's a kit, other parts, doesn't matter. You'll get 5% off and I get 6% of that sale. When it comes to buying kits, you should not use mine. Do not use my code for anything. I will, <laughs> seriously, it says it down there. Don't use my code for anything. If you go into the Folger Tech Facebook group, there is an 11% discount code. You can use that and you get 11% off your, coupon, your, your purchase, regardless of what it is from Folger Tech. And no one gets any commission off of that. None of the people, none of the admins on the group, no one on the group, I don't get anything. Doesn't matter what it is. You should use that code because that's economically the best idea. But for those of you who are adamant on wanting to support me and support my channel only or my channel and helping me out, whatever it is, you do have an option. There is a code and I get a little bit of kickback from that. So feel free to use it if you would like. But I am telling you, you shouldn't because economically that's a terrible idea. You get a better discount using the Folger Tech Facebook group thing. But if you don't want to be on Facebook, if you don't want to, you know, if you want to support me and you genuinely just want to support me and you don't care about that extra 6% discount that you can get, there is a coupon code. Like I said, C-O-R-B-I-N, Corbin, is the coupon code. Use the link that's down there to go to the Folger Tech thing. And that's what that's for. So, um... Yeah, that's about it. I'm going to stop talking now. It's late at night. It's Christmas E or it's Christmas, and uh, I'm going to go edit this video, put it online. It's going to be great. And uh, like I said, give this like, comment, share, subscribe, all that kind of nonsense. And until the next video, I'll see y'all later.